Hey YouTube and welcome to the last of the input nodes. We've been through the entire list apart from this image node which we are going to look at this week. The node itself consists of an image output and an alpha output and it has a data block that you can link. Uh, by default there is only the render result and a file browser uh, that you can link to any images on your uh, PC. Now the images usually correspond to the one the file formats that you have available on your PC uh, so by standard it has bitmaps iris, it's a SGI iris format I uh, don't know what that is, never heard of irises before uh, PNGs, that's a kind of lossless format and it allows an alpha channel to be embedded uh, JPEGs, those are, can be low s file sizes, uh, a bit of low quality, lower quality than PNGs generally, uh, but they're a good standard JPEG, but they are uh, limited to 8 bits, I, th I think, or 16 bits. I think 16 bits, I can't remember, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, JPEG 2000 is a more advanced version of the JPEG, but ne these don't have alpha channels and then you have your uh, lossless files, your Targa, Targa RAW, TIFF files and they allow you to input detailed images, uh, 16, 32 bits I think, I, I believe. HDRs are images with a higher luminance range, usually we would use them for lighting but we can use them in the compositor as well. Uh, OpenAXR is a multi-layered um, image, so we'll get into that a bit later. DPX, no idea, never heard of it before. And Cineon, again, something different. Okay, so let's uh, let's start by opening up an image. So let's go to my downloads, and we'll get something simple. And these are shouldn't can't really open those because they're probably copyrighted to some degree even though I'm using them on my other videos hey ho okay so we have in a blender PNG and if I control shift and click I get a viewer and I can add a backdrop so we can see what's going on uh, let's uh, go full screen okay so we have the image and as you can see in the image it has an alpha channel on it but the alpha is not showing up on the render so we can see the alpha channel, it just uh, shows the cutout of the uh, of the Blender logo. So if we have the image and we use the alpha channel, we can plug that into the viewer node and we can see our alpha. No, we can't. And the reason for that is because the use alpha checkbox is unticked. So we'll tick that and it cuts out the alpha. And we don't really even need to have it plugged in, but it is useful to have the alpha channel available for masking and things. Okay, now underneath the image we have this other menu, which is single image, and if we open that, we can see that we now have a different selection of images. So, this Blender logo is a single image, there's nothing else associated with it, so we'll keep it at that. And let's add another image, and this time, if I go to my temp file, we can open a series of images. We have a collection 2045 to 2170. So let's open the image first and you can see it's the garage images that we rendered in our last video in the track position node video. And if we go change it from single image to image sequence, we get all these different options. Uh, frames 1 and we know that there is more than one frame, so we can change that to the number of frames that we have in our clip. So if we just open up our file browser again, let's bring that over, you can see 245 to 2170, 2145, that is 105. Add 20, 125 frames. So let's lose that. So if we change our frames from 1 to 1 to 5, press enter. Now it says the start frame is 1, but our images are numbered in a higher sequence from when we rendered it in a later part of our video. We have the frame from then. 
so the problem here is that the start frame on here is 1 so we could change that to 2045 if we needed it to start on the actual frame but as we're just looking we can use the offset function which sets the frame image the image number as the frame number offset by its number if you see what I mean okay and cyclic if we click that the image sequence will continue on after those 125 frames so if we had 250 frames as we do in our normal our normal timeline we can so if we tell our blender to go ahead so and we get to frame two three four five and then that's the end and then we carry on from six and it starts again and that's what cyclic means on the uh, thing auto refresh will automatically update the frame sometimes if that's not checked it won't refresh the frame so let's click that and then as we scrub through we automatically get the updated frame change so let's see if we no it still can't do it uh, in real time but we can get the immediate response when we use the timeline uh, scrubbing tools okay so that's uh, the depth channel just adds itself automatically when you drop in an image uh, so that's image sequences uh, movie we can open that's, uh, that's the image sequence so let's shift a add input image and we'll open a movie we got a movie anywhere have a look I don't want to get something rude by accident um, that one will do open okay so we you can as you can see we can bring in a movie clip and it's a upside down clip of my um, work, old workstation so let's put that on cyclic and auto refresh and see if we can get it to generate frames not really it's not doing anything uh, of course I'm now you see I'm stuck on the frame once so it is only allowing us to view the first frame yeah. and that is the same as the image sequence that would happen so instead let's put that to 250 see if we've got any change there yes there we go and we can scrub through just the same as if we were using an image sequence and this is a lot easier than using the movie film input node if we were to have that if you remember input movie clip is that one open clip as you can see we've got the same exact thing in except we have no ability to choose the frames we can't offset the start of where this appears or uh, the start frame and we can't change the number of frames that we want to use in this particular in in the movie clip node which is why it's uh, better in many cases to use the image input node and we can use the offset scale and angle as separate nodes so we, we won't actually lose these values that we might need later because they're, 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 we can add them in afterwards ourselves as we need them so let's uh, let's delete that okay so that's the movie so that's the image form formats and things you can use with it uh, now here's the thing uh, if we go to our render settings if you use the right output format like the open axr multi-layer or open axr formats uh, you can save different layers of your image into one single image and then bring that so let's uh, let's take a look at that so in this other blend file i have here an image of a truck and it's a truck oh, i got a, it's a truck i got from blendswap.com uh, and it's by panic q and that's the link address i'll also link that into the description if you want to take a look at, at this truck uh, it's made for a game and it's not textured or unwrapped it's just a basic military truck and it's a quite a nice low poly it's actually it's quite a nice low poly truck actually but what are we going to do with it so first make sure i'm in blender normal render okay so we have a bunch of lights in the scene and if we do a scene render you can see it's just on the black background okay very nice get back to solid view so we have all these lights in there um so also let's add a plane shift a add mesh plane okay so let's edit that u unwrap smart uv project yeah 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 and let's open our image in the uv image editor let's open an image 
Let's just have a concrete. Now if we look in rendered view that should show up. There we go, we've got the concrete texture underneath our truck. Oh, it's all lovely. Alright, so now that we have all that set up, let's go to our render passes and organise our layers. Select this, move it underneath this. Move to layer 1. Move those to layer so now everything's gone dark so if we include the layers again everything's back to normal and if we start arranging our render layers so the first render layer let's call the truck floor and lights all right so for the lights we are on this layer the floor is on this layer and the truck is on this layer and if we hit the render button and we render that out there's one layer there's two layers and there's three layers okay so let's go to our compositing change this open to an open EXR multi-layer uh, use nodes we have our first render layer shift D shift D and just make sure and we want certain passes so for the truck we want a combined pass uh, let's have an object index uh, environment and colour ok the floor we want the UVs uh, again object index if we were to be using that it's just a rush job we're not doing any of these uh, let's have environment and indirect and for the lights we just want indirect emit reflection alright for the floor make sure we have the shadows checked as well we might want to play with them alright so we've got all these extra extra passes uh, so now if we change that to the floor change that to the light and we can start combining these shift A and input uh, uh, that one on there that one on there Put them in the right direction yeah there we go and the light shift A add cover mix there we go and that just helps to soften that up now if we go back to our render settings uh, open EXR, multi-level, RGBA, full float and the lossless thing so let's just render one pass of that and save ok now that we have that done let's go to our blender that we were just using and this is the original blender so let's X, delete those, shift A, add input image connect that to the viewer now let's open up our, in our temp now there should be an EXR file somewhere, there it is down at the bottom, you see it's quite a big file, it's 4 megabytes uh, whereas our other files are about a quarter of that for the JPEGs strangely enough uh, anyway let's open that EXR and you can see it has the EXR data there of the combined pass but we also have this layer option and we can choose the layers of our various uh, renders that we had in our other file see we have the same passes here and they are stored in our new one. So let's uh, duplicate that, shift D shift D, of course remember there was three and if we change it to the individual layers let's have that as a truck that as a floor and that as the lights and you can see we have also stored all the individual passes that we selected in our previous file. So essentially our image input node has exactly the same attributes as the render 
uh, layers nodes on the other file and we can combine them in the same way so if I shift a add color alpha over drop that in there again flip them into the correct thing shift a add color mix drop that in there drop that in there change it from mix to add make sure we have it in the right direction and then we can change that put in an emission shift a add another mix node and change that to multiply change it from white to anything and you can use the lighting information like so uh, let's not use that though let's uh, get rid of that uh, we have the UV pass so if we were to Shift a uh, other map UV. Alright, so we can take this and change the UVs. Just slip that in there. Shift A. I'll input image. And we'll open from R E change the shape of our ground from hot to this uh, granite instead so we can open that plug the image into the image there and now we've changed from our original UVs to these new UVs this new UV map and this is right here in the render so we don't need to uh, re-render the whole thing shift a hard output and we can have this straight into the UV image editor and if I shift a add another image I'm getting carried away with these images now um, choose a nice evening HDR open that image and drop our HDR background in just like that just like that and we are overly large because we are not at the same render settings as our original images so one final thing we can do is to just check what our image was in there it's a lot easier 738 by 476 738 by 476 so now when we hit render, we should get our image nicely fitted in. And there we go, exactly as we would hope without all the waiting time of having to render the whole clip out if, as if we were adding everything to the render layers and making our changes to a rendered image. As you can see if we render this without the HDR we have to wait for the rendering to happen, all the different layers and it takes a lot longer. Ok so that's it for the image editor, I'm finished with the input so I'm going to take a break from the What's It For series and do a few VFX tutorials. Hopefully this cold will be gone by next week and I can get started on those. Um, I think next week we will do some, we'll work our way through the distort menu after we've done a few effects, we'll get to familiar with all these little bits and pieces. Uh, so don't forget to check out our blog channel, um, links in the description, also we are on YouTube. Uh, hopefully we will start getting some content out for that channel soon. So go subscribe now and be ready for when it starts to happen. Okay, so for now I'll see you. I'm done. I'm going to bed. I'll see you next time.